Hey, what's up guys? So tonight, um, and it is pretty freaking late here, I'm going to do a takedown video of this uh, Kershaw induction. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, you will have seen my post tonight where I struggled, um, one, to take this thing apart, and then two, to put it back together again. I actually tried to record taking it down without trying it first, and that was a cluster. It just didn't happen. So I had to move the camera out of my way, and I just went to work. Um, I'm going to say I spent a solid hour. A lot of you guys would probably do better. But the nice thing is I'm going to take this thing down in this video so that you don't have to. Um, and so hopefully your curiosity will be satiated. And I typically don't do takedown videos, but the Zero Tolerance 0055 was interesting enough that I did want to do a takedown video to see how it worked and then also show you guys. And I think this Kershaw induction with the Hawk Lock is interesting enough that um, again, I wanted to take it down, see how it worked, and show you guys. Now, um, one of my followers on Instagram actually showed me a picture of the Hawk Lock on the Kershaw Ram. And the Hawk Lock on the induction here is actually a different version of the Hawk Lock. Um, it has two locking metal pieces inside, whereas the Ram had one locking metal piece. Um, anyways, uh, if you guys... Um, I'll post a picture of that on Instagram or something. So let's get into it. Uh, this is just going to be a way less professional than my normal videos. Um, but let's take this thing down. So a couple things you might need if you do decide to take down, which again, I would not recommend unless absolutely necessary. You'll need a T6 and a T8. Get quality tools. Trust me, I have screwed up enough knives to know that it's absolutely worth it. Another piece you might need is a strong magnet. I had to use this freaking magnet like four times because stuff kept falling on the floor. I've kind of got a shag carpet underneath me and I could not find the pieces in the shag carpet. So let's do this. I'm going to close it. And the Hawk Lock is actually encased in kind of this front scale here. So basically you want to do a full takedown and then save the scale for last. So I'm going to grab my T6 driver. And we're going to start with the pieces here holding the frame together. And there were some Loctited pieces uh, that were in here pretty good. So, um, you know, did struggle with those a little bit. But now that I've already broke everything on the Loctite, it should, in theory, be easier. But I'm sure as hell not making it look that way. Okay. So the, uh, essentially the frame screws were Loctited, so you can see we have a standoff here, a standoff here, and then the pivot was uh, Loctited as well. So I've got the two frame screws off one side here. Let me grab the T8. Let's undo the pivot. Alright, so we have separated the knife for the most part here. There we go. Now, a couple of things. So one, I did get something wrong on my initial video. I thought this thing was on bearings because it was so damn smooth. In fact, it's not. It uses a Teflon washer here against the aluminum frame, um, the aluminum scale. And then there is a Foster Bronze washer against the blade itself assuming I put it back together correctly from the first time I took it apart. So let's go ahead and disassemble the blade here. So, um, again, Foster Bronze, um, very, very thin Teflon, and they sandwich like yay. So move those out of the way, hopefully not lose them. All right, so here's the blade. That's the way it's shaped, and the hawk lock aspect are these two pins here. I'm not going to pretend that I know how to describe how they work to you, but I will show you right here. Oh, mother. Oh, yeah. And down I go again. Oh, also, flashlight. There we go. Okay. All right, 
and we do have different sizes here um, between the Teflon washer or between the phosphor bronze. Obviously, um, there's less space here with these two pins, and so the smaller Teflon goes here, the larger Teflon goes on the back. But let me show you this particular piece. So, as you guys can see, here's the hawk lock aspect. And then, you know, the two pins here. This one essentially, I believe it serves as the detent here because this is spring loaded as well. So, very, very interesting. Very cool stuff. A uh, couple other things here, let me show you. Um, so we have a hardened stainless steel stop pin. It does go right into the aluminum frame. And there is a little bit of warpage here on the aluminum frame. I don't know if it was like that from the factory or that's come from me flipping it a lot. A little bit less on the other side, so yeah. Very interesting. Now, one thing. Here's the pivot. So as you guys can see, it is a D-shaped pivot. However, when I was initially um, trying to get this thing taken apart, and I was trying to break the um, Loctite on it, um, it was actually free spinning on this other side. So either I over torqued it, and I overcame the, um, the D-lock, or the, the D-shaped pivot, and just cause it to spin. Yeah, see it's spinning on this side. Catches a little bit, but on this side, I'm sorry, on the uh, non-locking side, because the show scale's the locking side, it actually sits a bit tighter. But anyways, it did free spin, so I probably over torqued it. Um, it is not, you know, it's not D-shaped. It's a very, very subtle D-shape here. So again, I'm guessing I over torqued it. It's not as pronounced as on some other knives. So, anyways, okay. So now that we've made a mess, we've got crap everywhere. Let's go ahead and take apart the actual hawk lock. And this is the part where we're gonna have stuff fly everywhere because there are things under spring tension. Okay. All T6, they are smaller screws. I'm not sure when, but I did magnetize this Torx, or somehow it became magnetized, and that is a delightful thing. All right. So now we're going to have crap shoot across the room, probably. Okay. All right. Nice. Nothing shot across the room. So here is the actual hot clock on this one. And again, it's a bit different on the RAM. Um, I don't know if this is version 2.0 or this made the most... All right, so now, now that shot across the room. Luckily, uh, something landed on the magnet, or at least one part of it. I still have to find the spring. So ridiculous. The first time I took it apart, I didn't lose anything. Well, I mean, it ended up on the floor, and then the magnet found it. This time, <coughs> I do not know where that spring went. Freak, all right, flashlight again. Yeah, that's uh, it's not gonna happen in this video. I'm gonna have to take everything apart to try to find that spring. 
And again, this is why you don't do this at home. So, let me show you how it works on one side at least. Alright. Man. Okay. So, this is the way that the, um, the spring system works. So, obviously you have a compression spring. You have a small little guide rod. Let me bring it closer. So, compression spring with a little tiny guide rod. And then, you know, here's the locking system. And then again, this, this spring is held in place by the back of the scale, essentially. So, that's what, you know, lets you disengage the lock there and open it. Now, I'm going to open this. On the other side, essentially you have, um, I believe this is the D10, I'm fairly certain, and it functions the exact same way, so you do have a spring under tension. There we go. And, you know, as you go to overcome this thing, which I'm doing a terrible job of showing you, um, basically here's the you know, the D10 system. Again, I showed you guys this a little bit earlier, but um, it's a two-part system. And again, I, I haven't taken a RAM apart. I've never even owned the Kershaw RAM, but that one had, um, instead of two separate metal pieces, like so, um, it appeared to just have one metal piece. But um, anyways, very interesting design. Very, very creative. Uh, this is why I love Grant and Gavin Hawk. They just do stuff that, I don't know, it's... Um, it's, it's just interesting. So, I mean, the, the interesting thing is a lot of times I'll, I'll look at some knives, I'll take them apart, and I'll think, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Like, I can see that. And when I take Grant and Gavin stuff apart, I'm just like, huh, that's interesting. You know, it's not like a, aha, yeah, I see what they did there. It's like, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. I'm glad that works. So, I don't know, maybe some of you guys are more technical or do stuff like that for work, machinists or whatnot. Um, maybe you don't have those moments that might be all clear and simple for you. So, anyways, that's how it works. I would have loved to put the freaking knife back together again, but I don't know where the hell that's... Oh, no, no, damn. I don't know where the hell that spring went, so I'm going to have to uh, take apart my desk here and uh, try to find it with the help of this uh, trusty magnet that was kind enough to catch the little tiny guide rod piece as it shot out of there. So that was uh, super handy. But anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed taking a look at that. You know, again, the Hawk Lock system is all comprised in the show scale. Um, aluminum construction for the rest. Obviously, you have some stainless steel parts. And then, you know, um, another portion of the blade here. And I haven't, I've handled quite a few of the Grant and Gavin Hawk deadlocks, the um, out the front automatics. And they also use a component that I believe like locks on the blade or the, um, anyways, they, they use the blade um, as a functional piece more so than as a, you know, works in the system. It's actually part of the system. Terrible explanation, but, you know, I guess they seem to do that. So, anyways, um, Gavin, I have no doubt disappointed you with this video as well as everyone who put these together or designed these at, um, at Kai or Kershaw. Um, this knife did take a while to come to market, as you guys can see with all the different pieces. And then, you know, this isn't an easy assembly process. It's not like you're gonna bang these out every, you know, every 20 seconds, or at least I don't think so. It probably took way longer to assemble these things than, um, you know, other Kershaw knives where you don't have parts under spring tension or, you know, it's there's less parts under spring tension. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Again, um, I keep jacking these up every time I do these disassembly videos. So this is, um, you know, again, this was the last knife I wanted to disassemble for a while unless something really interesting crosses my path. So thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to berate me in the comments per usual, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. All right, so part two, I guess. Uh, I did find the spring finally, so I'm going to try to assemble this real quick here. We'll see what happens. So, all right. Put the two metal pieces in for the lock and the detent system, like so. And then I take the first spring 
and I find that putting the metal in in the spring second seemed to work better for me. So hopefully I'm staying focused here. Just basically nestling that spring down, keeping it tight. Okay. Same thing here with the other one. Get it in, put it tight. And then, so you have to keep pressure on both the spring and the lock bars because they'll just kind of both just shoot up in the middle. So now, slide the cover over, remove all the dog hair. Okay, so there's that. Let's grab a T6. One of the small ones here. Oh, I love when these are magnetized. Okay, and we'll just start assembling. So it looks like most of these were Loctited a tiny bit. Um, I might go back over and Loctite them later. So these are the body screws, and this is one of the f screws for the cover. All right, so that's back on. Pretty cool. All right, so that portion's done. Let's grab the lock side. Um, now the pivot does go through. Oh my gosh, I'm dropping everything. All right, working around a camera is completely different than just doing it on your own. So that does fit in there on the show side. Now I do need to grab the smaller of the Foster Bronze washers and the Teflon there. And then obviously the two pins interact here. Okay. And then let's grab the stop pin. We'll let that close. Alright, let's grab the other phosphor bronze and little tiny Teflon, again paper thin, but they get the job done, that's for sure. So, let's put that on, make sure that locks into place, there we go. So the pivot and the stop pin, it'll pop into place. Now, need to grab one of the body screws, just one. Okay, and now let's start with the pivot. That's probably a little bit easier. Then we'll get to the body screws. Come on. Guys, I'm making this look way more difficult than it really needs to be. And I'll go back and Loctite this stuff later uh, with a tiny bit of blue Loctite. So, come on. Cool. All right. Tighten the pivot a little bit more. Check the body screws. Probably not keeping a lot in frame and 
boom. Back to a functioning, delightful Kershaw knife. So, all right, that was the takedown, that was to put back together. Once you get the hang of it, it's not as bad, but it's a really cool system. Um, and again, there's some, you know, changes to the, uh, to the Hawk Lock versus the Ram. So, um, yeah, very, very cool. Fun knife, very smooth, considering that it's on washers. Um, really impressed with that. My pivot's still a bit loose, and it's spinning. Let's see if it can push down a little bit, get a little bit tighter. Okay, yeah, it's solid. All right. That's it. Thanks for watching. Take care.